afternoon, brothers and sisters. Well, I'm, I want to, you know, the last couple of days I've been working and not, you know, getting psychologically close and to the Lord and calling upon the Lord into where he wants us to go, right? Where does he want us to go? We know more dates have failed and, you know, I want to be a watcher. I, de I definitely want to be watching the signs and, and the times. And I was inquiring why, you know, Lord, and why this and why that, as you do. And I don't know why I didn't know this. I've got to share this, really. And it, it is to share. Because I've always asked the Lord for the heart of Davis, David, Davis, David, and not knowing what that full heart of David was, you know. I mean, I know he was a young man who went out and slayed uh, Goliath and cut his head off, you know, with his with Goliath's sword, you know, and, and the rest of it. We know this, the history of uh, David it had a terrific courage and faith in the Lord, complete faith in the Lord. And he got it contemplating looking after sheep, sitting still, probably of an evening, looking up and, and questioning the Lord in prayer. He was a prayerful man. Are we prayerful people? Not just gabbling words out. Are we prayerful people? Here in the heart is where the prayer is. And it came with a mighty slap last night as I read over Psalm 32. And most of us know it, how much actually live it. Is what I is what the thing, and I'm talking about myself tonight. Let's read it, and I've compared it with the King James here on the screen, and I'm reading out the uh, NLT now because it's a lot of people that are coming here that do not know the Lord. Forgive me, I haven't got my green screen right. I don't know what's gone wrong, but um, it's fine. We can read what's doing. I both sorted all sorts of technical problems to stop me getting this message out. I can assure you. But oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. We'd always say, we've done that when we confess with our mouth. Oh, Jesus has done all that. I remember me saying that yesterday. Oh, Jesus, so we've got to stand in heaven together. Are we going to say, oh, Jesus, you, you did it. I arrogantly say, Jesus, you put all that behind me because of your death on the cross. No, no, no. I, I want to bring out, because that's not the case, certainly for me, and I don't think for anyone. Yes, what joy for those whose record, whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt. That was done to the cross. Yeah, he died. He died for our sin. No question. But, whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. Jesus died 2,000 years ago. I was born 65 years ago. Whose lives are lived in complete honesty. Hmm. That's worth a thought, isn't it? When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy on me. When David refused to confess his sin, the Lord's discipline was upon him. All day long he groaned. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and I stopped trying to hide my guilt. This is where the, the light goes on. Ding! I might hurt you. I might sin against you. But only against God have I sinned. And then I'll come to you and I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Totally missing out where I should be going. In the first instance, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. David said in 5, finally, finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. How many times in our life, I can think of many occasions, numerous occasions, when you've really, really been sorry you've hurt someone, really, really, really wish you could do anything to stop that, sorry, really, really know you've been wrong in your heart, you're hurting. 
because you've wronged that person. Just pause for a minute and think about that. How many times? And how many times have we stopped and really, 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 really know that we've hurt God? Really, really know within our heart that we've hurt him with the same hurt. Just a thought, I'm not questioning you, but I'm going back to a catalogue of hurt and God. And I'm confessing. When Jesus wept, when many of his stories, when people wept in confession, that's a difference between saying, oh, sorry, sorry, didn't mean to do it. I, I've, I've asked your forgiveness. I can't forgive you of anything. I can't forgive you of anything and you can't forgive me of anything. You can say, at best, oh, brother, that's fine. At very, very best, you can actually love me somehow. But I've sinned against God, and only against God have I sinned. And when I learn to confess these things, then things become right to him. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, my rebellion against human mankind but I will confess it to the Lord. And you forgave me, all my guilt is gone. Now let me tell you what happens. The enemy is our accuser. And he uses the book, the word, as the legality to accusers. He is the accuser of the brethren. It's all in the word when the Lord brings it out. How do we stop him? Think of how Jesus was tested. I often question at this point, and it's not up for discussion, did Satan actually know that Jesus was the Son of God? Because he said, if you are the Son of God. When the, when the, when the arguments were going on, it is written. It is written that. And Jesus would answer, well, it is written that man shall not live, live by bread alone, but out of every word of God. That is scripture, by the way. That is scripture. They lived on scripture. This scripture is saying here in Psalm 32 that if I forget, if I confess my sins to him in absolute agony and pain, in heartfelt confession, then he will forgive. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time. Ho, oh, ho, while there is still time. Yes, I'm going to keep watching. While there is still time. Read through this for yourself. Don't take my word for it. That they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathways for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like the senseless horse or mule that needs a bit or a bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. Confess to the Lord and trust him. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy and all those whose hearts are pure. Heart service, not lip service. When we push out our heart to him, he will move to our heart. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You are saved if you follow him. Lest what you believed would be in vain. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. We've got to switch on to the word, brothers and sisters. The battles that's happening. You know I've talked about them over the last two videos. Is it any of this? I've been apologised to in flippant ways. As if you can wash it away by saying sorry to me. It's nothing to do with me. 
Nothing. And don't say that with joy. And what I do to anyone is nothing to do with that person. It's to do with my heart getting close to God straight away so that I can confess to him so that the enemy will not accuse me and attack me or be allowed to do so through my own breaking of the law. I've got to be honest with this stuff. This has taken me years and years and years and years to learn. Read this. Meditate on this. Meditate on Psalm 32. 1 to 11. Please, let's take this thing by the horns. Let's usher in the end times with our faithfulness and our love and our joy. In him who forgives, only him who forgives. Again, because only him have I sinned against, our Lord God. Jesus gave us a great gift by his death and resurrection. He gives us the ability to talk to Father God with our heart, confess another gift, and biggest of all, repent, change our minds, hearts, and come to him. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to leave you with that another heavy one and say may God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious to you until we go home. But please meditate on this one. That's a call from God, not from me. God bless. <laughs>